obviously shooting 29 percent and Wade having a, a really uncharacteristic game, and yet you're still in the game with a minute left. What what uh, what does that say? I thought we tried real hard. Um, I thought our competitive character was excellent. So we did a really good job on the offensive glass. It's hard to shoot more balls than a team as talented as they are. I thought that gave us a chance. We turned the ball over at too high of a rate. We have been pretty good in that regard in the first 14 games. That speaks to their coaches. That speaks to their talent that we had the turnover rate that we did. Buzz, you guys had some success on the offensive glass, but the second chance points were, were kind of limited. What did they do to, to limit y'all's effectiveness there? They're, they have great presence at the rim. Four, 44, two, 31. Just their, their, their size, their physicality, their length. We, we did do a good job on the offensive glass. Uh, not only on the putbacks, but also on the penetration to the rim. We, we didn't finish at a high rate. Uh, I think 40% of our shots happened at the rim. Some of them were, to your point, were from offensive rebounds. But we only shot 40% at the rim. Four, I call Wade Taylor four. Four was some of those attempts. But most of those attempts were the guys getting the offensive rebounds. And so we, we, we do need to do a better job <clears throat> finishing on those offensive rebounds. Obviously, early in, in SEC play this season, you've had a lot of success in this building over the years. I guess, was anything maybe different you've noticed this I, year? I, I'm not from here, and I know Coach Cohen, and I've known him since I was really young, and I love him, but I don't know anybody here. But I think the environment is like all that you want college basketball to be. Um, everybody's hollering at me and uh, mad at the officials. And you, as far as you can see, people are standing up there. Um, they're here as soon as we get here. I don't think they're all drinking water. Um, I think maybe that the, the the state laws, state liquor laws, are probably different here than elsewhere. I I like it. I know when we had college game day here. I think I think going into tonight, I think we had played Auburn six times since we've been here. Not all obviously here. I think college game day. Um, year, year number one, I think they had played, uh, they had won 16 games in a row. I think we beat them. I think uh, the second time we played them, Andre Gordon hit a shot in the lane to beat them by one possession. The third time we played them was college game day, February the 12th. So that would have been Saturday morning at 11.30. They beat they beat the brakes off us off of us. I think we lost by seventeen or eighteen. So that's three. So tonight was seven. We played them in the conference tournament last year. That would have been a game, but there's a game in between that Saturday college game day and the conference tournament. So that would have been last year. I think that would have been here too, right? And uh, I think if you take away the COVID games. They were on another winning streak at home when we won here last year. So that must be the uh, somewhere there's another game in there. I, I, I'm not saying that's why we won. Um, but when you ask a question, I just kind of remember all the times that we've played them. I think, I think when we played them in Tampa, I think we played really well in the first half. I think it's 37-21 at half. And then uh, – uh, what, what what's the kid's name? Number one and number 12. Number 12 was from Augusta, and he transferred from uh, College of Charleston, oh, maybe. 
Yeah, and then number one wore a headband. He he played here last year. Man, he those two guys were cooking us in the second half uh, in Tampa, and it turned into a game. Great environment, great support, great student section. Uh, those that aren't students, you can tell, are engaged. Someday when I'm not coaching, uh, I want to come to a, a football game here. Is a football game here have the same sort of vibe? And what what is it called? Uh, what's the football stadium called? Jordan hmm. They call it what? The jungle. I thought, yeah, okay. Yeah, maybe I'll get a ticket. Yeah, is this normally where media is? Mm -hmm. I don't remember being in there. Yeah, it's new. We renovated it for this year. You got new carpet? <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't get new chairs for these guys. No. Those chairs came from the church. <laughs> <laughs> the church donated them to Auburn. So they get a tax write off. Just take baby steps down. <laughs> Slow moving, huh? Uh, just one more quickly, Buzz. Y'all's pressure defense, you know, they had to take out their, their starting point guard a good point a good portion of the game. What He's did you see really that you guys talented. what were you guys doing effectively against him and to kind of make that uh, defense work? I, I don't I, I he, he number one is good, but num, number three could you could argue may be the most improved freshman to sophomore perimeter player that I've studied thus far in the league. He's really leaned out. I bet he's lost seven to eight percent body fat. Strength coach needs a raise. Uh, I think he's much more comfortable playing with leverage. Uh, he has the highest usage. He has a higher usage rate than number one. I think uh, number three's usage rate is 28% off the bench. That's a really high number. Obviously, 10 is a microwave when he comes in offensively. But we were trying to change so that they couldn't ever get in a groove. Change a little bit of what we were doing in the front court changed a little bit of what we were doing in ball screen coverage. Um, I think they're so explosive offensively that if you keep giving them the same diet, um, they it, in the games that I had watched, they seemed to just get better and better. So we we're just trying to alter the rhythm as best we could, particularly on the primary ball handlers. Okay, thank you guys.